I built the largest virtual theme park ever created, and we're in the process of touring it. This is the Toucan Kingdom. We have 23 roller coasters, 54 rides, 38 restaurants. This park has over 200,000 individually placed objects that I placed over the five years that I built this park. For this episode of the tour, I'm gonna have it set to nighttime because we're gonna be exploring the sci-fi section of the park. And I feel like it sells the theme if we make it dark like we're in outer space. The first thing we're touring though is actually the very first section we built of the park, which is Main Street Avenue. <laughs> it's hilarious. We're starting with a French restaurant named Bistro Epoque. And on Main Street Avenue, we have several types of buildings. We got some restaurants, but we also have customer service, some storage, and a staff lounge. But one of my favorite buildings here is this one that has the nice deck. We have vintage stock. Or this is a place where you can buy some video game themed merchandise because this theme park is full of video game references. There's some areas themed as video game references and then there's some shops that have themes. You just gotta watch the tour to see all the Easter eggs I shoved in here. Here's the first mini food court I built, Food Haven. It's crazy to think that I built all these places five years ago and now here we are finally touring them. It took a long time to get here, but you can't rush a masterpiece. Main Street Avenue is looking gorgeous. It feels very vintage. It gives me a lot of nostalgia, and I'm sure it does for some of you as well. And it's just a nice, lively Main Street. But now let's go ahead and move on to the sci-fi section theme of the park, Planet Nebulon, which is the very first section of the park that was built. And because of that, it has so many crazy details that I added. Mmm, those french fries look yummy. Las fritas. All right, let's check it out. Oh, and we have a little maintenance robot who's using some of his jet propulsion. Out of all of the scenery sets that Planet Coaster includes, I think the sci-fi scenery pack is my all-time favorite. And I like it mainly because I think a lot of the scenery pieces in the sci-fi pack go together really well, and you can combine them to make some very creative builds. Oh, and here's a great gift shop. We have Gear Gear, the best place to buy your gear-themed accessories and gear. Okay, let's get in line for the first roller coaster that I ever built in this park and it still holds up in my opinion, the Manhattan Project. And this coaster is themed after the US government research project known as the Manhattan Project that produced the first atomic bomb. And on this coaster, you're going through the laboratory that invented the first nuclear bomb before it has a nuclear meltdown. And you try to escape the laboratory before it combusts. This is my ninth favorite roller coaster in the park and that's because it's a really fun coaster, but it also is combined with some really fun scenery and a bit of a storyline. Now real fast, let's watch the guests unload and load from the car, just so we can check out the amount of detail that they put into the guest animations for Planet Coaster. And then all the new guests line up in their individual lanes for the next train. It's so cute. So this coaster starts off by taking us through a tour of a laboratory that is developing the first atomic bombs during World War II. It's very quiet, a little bit too quiet. And then as soon as you go through the lasers, you activate a security feature that activates an emergency detonation to eliminate anybody who is trying to break into the US government laboratory to steal the plans of the atomic bomb. And honestly, the robots don't deserve to die like this. It's not fair. But before we die, we launch out a spectrum tunnel. And then you launch up a giant vertical tower, similar to the coasters like Top Thrill Dragster or King Daka. And then we fly back down and start going through some loops. Also, please don't mind the guest who keeps on putting his hands in front of our face. I don't know why he's doing that. Oh, you see on the roof, the building's on fire. The laboratory is committed to burning down. So when I built this very first coaster in the park, 
My ultimate goal was to make a roller coaster that combines the type of scenery that you saw at parks like Disneyland and Universal Studios, and then also attach a coaster segment to it that reminded me of the coasters that you would see at Six Flags and Cedar Fair parks. And I was really, really happy and inspired by this first coaster. So as you can tell, I just kept on going until we had 23 roller coasters in this park, which if this park was real, it would have the most roller coasters out of any park in the world. Now another feature that I want to show off is you can actually go into the guest eyes from a first person point of view and see what they're seeing. And I thought this would be a kind of cool way to show the exit of the roller coaster. I didn't want to do it for the line because it takes forever for the guests to wait in line and get through that. But this is a cool way to tour like little details of your park that wouldn't normally worth me putting the time in for. Well, this feature kind of makes it worth the time because you can experience it firsthand through one of these guests. And of course, we have lots of benches and trash cans by the exit in case people get a little bit sick from riding the coaster. Now let's move on to a restaurant that has some patio seating out on the little lake. This is Future Foods where the cheese is made of circuit boards and the spaghetti is made out of freshly cut wires. Now this giant green coaster, that's the next one that we're gonna be riding. First, let's look at this tower over here. It has a nice bathroom inside. People are racing to get into. <laughs> And it also has a gift shop. Gotta get yourself some astronaut gear. And ooh, we have the Manhattan Project. Ooh, it's about to launch again. Here it goes. It's like the best part. Yo, check out the lights. You can't really tell that's happening while you're riding the coaster, but it looks so good from a distance. It never fails to scratch my brain in the right spot. Alright, we're pulling up to the next roller coaster named the Gamma Ray. This coaster has us starting off by going inside a strange tunnel. Where could it possibly lead to? The camera controls and the ability to get really up close and personal with your builds makes putting in these details just so much more worth it because you can fly through and appreciate all the small details. But as we keep on going into the tunnel, we stumble upon a secret alien space station where they're working on some strange experiments. I have no idea what's going on though. I'm not smart enough for alien science. Now this coaster is gonna be the first inverted coaster we ride, meaning that the train is hanging from the track and our feet are dangling. Now as a tall person, I love these types of coasters because they're very comfortable on my very long legs. When people ask if there's anything bad about being tall, I always have my two go-to answers. Riding on airplanes and in the backseat of cars, and trying to fit on theme park rides. Sometimes it can be a struggle. And this coaster starts us off by taking us a little bit deeper into the alien base so we can do some exploration. I definitely wanted to set a nice tone for this coaster as well at the beginning. Now, ranking this coaster was kind of hard, and I ended up putting it in the middle of the list, at number 12. This coaster's fun and it has good scenery, but I wouldn't say it's anything super special. Although I do think it looks really sick, because we just have this gigantic intergalactic space land form just kind of sitting in the middle of the park, and there's this gigantic green coaster just like wrapping all around it. It kind of just has you flying through what it feels like a different planet. I was really trying to go along with the shape of the landform here, and I like this section where it wraps around the spire of the arch. Right before taking you into a rapid nosedive that leads into a huge overbank turn that overbanks so far to the point where it turns into a little barrel roll. Now one of the coolest things about building this park is when I started it, I knew about theme parks and roller coasters, but I had a pretty base level knowledge. It wasn't that extensive nor impressive, but building this park literally became a project where learning more about theme parks and roller coasters became part of the homework. I had so many conversations about theme parks and roller coasters and watched so many YouTube videos and read so many articles just so I could learn more so I could build this park better as it went along. And I would say doing this project like quadrupled my knowledge of theme parks. And it's pretty cool how just getting into a project, even if you're not completely qualified, can end up making you qualified by the time that you're done with it. Because you kind of put yourself into a situation where you end up having to learn 
what to do or else you're going to fail your project. And you don't want to fail your project. Come on, you want to finish it. You want to see it to the end. And that's what we've done here. And then also, I read so many comments from you guys when I was building this park on my Ultimate Theme Park series. That really helped shape this park as well. You helped me come up with tons of ideas and gave me so many names for rides and restaurants around the park that really helped just like shape the park in ways that I couldn't have done myself. So thank you for all of your guys' contributions. And then something else cool about our park is whenever you enter, you get an app and before you ride any ride, you scan your app before you get on it. And if there's an on-ride photo, then they'll just send you the on-ride photo automatically to your app for free because we've realized that giving guests free pictures of them in the park is the best form of advertising and will get us so many more people here without having to spend a dollar in advertisement. We also realized that charging 15 to $20 for a photo just isn't very practical when people love iPhones. Now right up here is a famous landmark in our theme park known worldwide as the Quadruple Rainbow because there is four layers of entertainment going on here. But this is kind of spoilers, we will come back to it later. First, we gotta hop on the ride that we just saw, the Mechanical Medusa. One of the coolest thrill rides that you can place in your park and planet coaster. We have some nice little structures to keep the guests safe from the sun and stuff when they're waiting in line for this ride. And we peep out and this, this thrill ride looks absolutely massive in scale. Let's watch the guests hop onto it. They're so precise with their movements. They walk up to their exact seat and they sit down and then they pull the restraints down on top of that and just sit there looking excited for the ride to start. All right, this ride's pretty crazy and makes us really dizzy. I'm just gonna give a taste of this one. After we're done touring the park, I'll make a full video that's a compilation riding every single coaster and every single thrill ride to its entirety with no commentary. So you guys can have some just pure amusement. Now, it's time to enter the largest building that we have in Planet Nebulon, the Oco Factory, which is a company in space that produces oxygen because it's on a planet where oxygen isn't a natural resource. So they have to produce it and they sell it because obviously if they're not making money, they're not gonna have any incentive to make oxygen for the people there, even though it's a necessity. In this giant complex, there is two roller coasters, a food court, bumper cars, and an entrance to our monorail system, the Tucana Express. The first coaster we'll be riding in here is a Star Wars themed coaster named the Skywalker. You see our homies, we have R2-D2 and CPPO. All right, let's hop in line. Now, as of right now, the only Star Wars roller coasters in existence are the rebrands of Space Mountain at Disneyland, where they just turned Space Mountain into a Star Wars Space Mountain. And I don't fully count that. I wanted to make a full-size Star Wars roller coaster that brought some real thrill. So here's the idea that I had. Oh no, R2-D2 lost his footing in the zero gravity room. That's no bueno. This room is one of my favorites in the park. And I love how in this park I built very, very huge structures. But then on the inside, it doesn't feel like you're in a huge structure because there's so much intricacy and complexity with the builds in almost every single room that you go into. Oh wait, hold up. Apparently Luke Skywalker is trying to send us a message. This factory should be shut down. Nothing here is up to code. Dang, Luke Skywalker is such a critic, but he is the one paying for a ship to be stationed here at the factory. So I guess he has the right to be pretty picky, huh? But on this roller coaster, join Luke Skywalker in his ship as he fights the stormtroopers. Dooku's droid army must be growing by the hour. Getting thrown right into the middle of a battle. Ah, have to be faster. I looked at the air coverage, so it's good that we got here. Take out one, and another returns instantly. R2? You still there, buddy? R2! Now, the thing I like a lot about this coaster is that in real life, I can't think of any hyper coasters or coasters that have really large drops above 200 feet that have this much scenery integrated into it. It seems like in real life, if you have a really large roller coaster, then they just like give up on the idea of adding scenery. 
never really understood why. Why not combine both and make the coolest coaster experience you possibly could? So I felt like a roller coaster where I felt like you were on a ship in Star Wars, fighting against the stormtroopers in a droid army would be just an amazing and thrilling experience. This factory is huge! And then we head all the way back to the Yoko factory, where we swoop in <laughs> underground. I wanted to make a stylish entrance. Yeah. That was a pretty ambitious coaster, and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. So sick. This ride's fast, brings a lot of the thrills, a lot of the airtime, and a lot of visual stimulation is occurring as you're riding the whole entire time. I love the custom scenery that people add to this game. It just adds so many more options for building. All right, let's head back to the oxygen company. Also, I spy with my little eye a Jedi Master named Yoda. Sounds like they're having a fun time. All right, next we're gonna swerve over to the bumper cars, which are named the Digital Dodgem. And of course, I had to go with the original Roller Coaster Tycoon bumper car theme. The techno beat just slaps too hard and it just plucks those nostalgia strings so perfectly in my head. Now the exit here connects up with the exit for the Skywalker coaster, so we have some more Star Wars scenery with our main man, Jabba the Hutt. Blugga, 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 blugga. Also, as a common question for you guys, if you could have a section of a theme park themed after any character or intellectual property that you like, what would it be? Like, who deserves a theme park ride? Does Darth Vader deserve his own ride? Nah, his breathing's too loud and annoying. It's almost as bad as people who don't close their mouth when they're chewing. So we have a nice space cafeteria back here with several different places to get food from. And of course, another bathroom. All of the excrement here gets flushed into the infinite abyss of outer space. And this building is one of those structures where I added so many details. I don't even know if I could have added more. <laughs> I pretty much went as far as I possibly could go before I was like, okay, I just need to stop. Oh, hi Ridley, I didn't mean to upset you. Please don't eat me, please don't eat me. Oh, ooh. eat all these people over here inside the Tucana Express. They're all wearing goofy hats. Come eat these goofballs. We don't need no goobers in our park. And the exit takes us back down to the cafeteria. Oh yeah, we have some lockers over here in case you need to keep your belongings safe when you're riding the coasters in here. And let's come over here to ride the next coaster, which is named the Cloud Runner. It's a close cousin of the Skywalker, but instead of being on the upper portion of the factory, this coaster is down in the basement. This is where the oxygen factory keeps all of its canisters of oxygen. The ones that are bright blue are ones that are full and ready to go. And the ones that are just dully colored are just empty canisters that have no oxygen inside of them. But the Cloud Runner is a wing coaster, and this ride is pretty fancy. So let's hop on it, shall we? Now the storage space down in these caverns is much larger than you might have anticipated. There is hundreds upon hundreds of canisters of oxygen down in these parts, although they're very unorganized. All right, the reason I like this coaster is we blast off to the surface you do a gigantic half loop and you get an upside down view of the factory now so real fast pay attention up to the right to that little building right there that we just passed by that was the original park entrance that i built in the very first episode of the series but when i remodeled the toucan plaza like 40 episodes in i no longer needed to use that entrance but it had a special place in my heart so i didn't want to delete it so i just moved it and used it as a little bit of a decoration out here I look forward, the train's gonna pass right there. And then a second time, we're gonna go past it. Oh, I love the timing on that. That was so perfect. I love this cavern. It feels very spacious down here. You have pretty much infinite space to build your theme park underground. I wonder what the craziest underground theme park is. Let's rank Cloud Runner real fast. It's gonna come in at number 17. I do love the way this coaster starts though. 
starts off just by rolling out of the station. It looks so cool as it just like disappears down into the void. Blast off onto the surface. What a fun ride. And I just like how it's below the Oko factory. It's just, it's down here. <laughs> All right, and then <laughs> I'm excited for the thing that's about to come up. It's probably the funniest part of this tour video. Coming out of the exit of the Cloud Runner, we enter Captain Falcon's Thirst Trap, <laughs> a place where you can buy some soft drinks. All right, so now we're back outside the Oko factory on the opposite side. We have a cool futuristic fountain. A tank over to the left. It's pretty scary. And there's Captain Falcon's Thirst Trap. And we have one last thrill ride in the Planet Nebulon section of the park. And I like the line for this ride. For some reason, this water tower makes me feel like I'm on a Hollywood back lot. I think it's a combination of the water tower and all of these studio lights pointing up at this ride, which is named the Solar Flare. And this is a sky flying swinging chairs ride that is kind of like your basic swinging chairs, except it takes you up hundreds of feet into the sky. That way you feel like you're going to die because you're being held up despite chains as you're swinging around. It's one of the most intense feelings, but the views are phenomenal. We have now seen every single ride in Planet Nebulon. We have a great overhead view right here, checking it all out. I'm very happy with how this section of the park turned out. Now let's ride one last ride. We got the good old Tucana Express, the monorail that takes you around the whole entire park where we have three separate stations. The first station is found in Volvagia Village at the very front of the park. I wanted to have one of the stations pretty close to the park entrance so this could be used as a good transportation to the back side of the park. Here we're going to get a sneak peek of the section of the park we're touring in episode 3 of the park tour, the French Riviera. It's one of the most colorful and most beautiful sections of the whole entire park. It's very photogenic. And the monorail swings right over to the Oko factory where we're going to load into the next station. Oh, looks like nobody was here. Time to pull out again and head to the next one. This monorail ride is very scenic. You get to see lots of good views. You get a pretty good tour of the park. I think you see almost every single section while you're on here, which is nice. That's how a monorail should be. You get a whole view of the whole battling happen during the Skywalker roller coaster, which is kind of nice because if this monorail wasn't here, then anybody who can't ride roller coasters would never be able to see what's happening on that ride. Now the next station is actually disguised as a subway tunnel, but it's not just any subway tunnel. It's what a subway tunnel would be if the architect was also an avid raver. It's really important that we have the monorail come back to the city though, because if it wasn't for this monorail, I think the walk would be like a mile from the entrance all the way back here. So certain guests would definitely not be able to make it unless this transportation was here. Now we're at the very rear of the park, which there is some gigantic lakes back here. Can we just talk about how phenomenal even the scenic mountain views are in the background? Like, I wish a theme park could exist in the middle of a mountain range. How gorgeous would that be? Six Flags Magic Mountain near Los Angeles has some mountains around it, but they're like 10% as pretty as the mountains around the Toucan Kingdom. I wonder what theme park has the best views in the world surrounding it. Cedar Point is surrounded by one of the Great Lakes, which I would say provides some pretty phenomenal views. We have the monorail train pulling back up into the Volvagia village. I like how it sits up on the wall. It's a nice use of space. And then it pulls back into the original station where we started. We are done with the second episode of Let's Tour the Toucan Kingdom. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, support the episode by liking and commenting on the video to help it out in the algorithm. I'm ending off the video by showing you guys a really cool time lapse where you get to watch all the lights in the park turn on once it starts getting dark outside. I like how they don't all just turn on at the exact same time. It's a little bit staggered. If you're trying to watch the full tour of this theme park, I'll have a link to the playlist down in the description that lets you watch every single episode of it with ease. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.